Okay, so tip number one is to break your writing into smaller bits. So what do I mean by that exactly? Well, you'll see this example on the screen right now of one of the emails that I use, I actually use this one, in my email auto response sequences. So this specific email is triggered a few days after someone goes ahead and signs up for my free dropshipping course. So this is obviously, let me show you really fast, this is the landing page for the free dropshipping course. People that are online, obviously I just give this away to collect email leads. Um, and then obviously I bring those leads into the business for a lot of different reasons and they they're happy They get free value in, in a free course teaching them how to drop ship with Shopify and Amazon and I get an email lead Obviously that person's interested in online business. So you can see here, uh, you know I'm this whole email is geared towards copywriting to entrepreneurs. So in short, it's short It's simple and it's to the point the whole objective here is to get the click and get the reader to head to the YouTube video uh, through the green link at the bottom, okay? So pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. So back to tip number one, notice how the sentences and lines are extremely broken up, okay? Uh, you know, they're not paragraphs. You can't expect your cost to keep your customer's attention through a long paragraph or even a couple sentences usually, okay? So often I see entrepreneurs making this mistake with their copywriting and they have paragraphs or, you know, paragraphs of text on the page. Your customer is never going to jump in and read all that text. They're not going to want to. And even if they start, they sure as hell won't finish it. So remember to break apart your copy with sentences and lines. The whole key here is to keep it short and keep it simple and to the point. Each thing is very short. It leads into the next sentence. It's very simple and to the point. It's okay to have a decent amount of copy on a page, assuming obviously that the copy is all relevant, obviously written well with good copywriting, but make sure that you break it apart into short chunks that are easily consumable by the reader. If your customer wanted to read a novel, okay, they'd buy a book. So here's yet another example of a post that I made on in, a, on in my Instagram page uh, about mental barriers every entrepreneur faces. And I'll scroll through slowly here so you can see it. Obviously, you know, the way it's set up. Now, notice something. It might be a lot of text overall, but it's broken down into short and consumable portions. I promise you that if you start implementing this copywriting tip, you will see a massive rise in the amount of people that actually read through to the end of your copy. Okay, so tip number two now, moving on, is to focus on what your customer wants. Sounds simple, right? But most people talk about me, me, me. You'll see things on, you know, website homepages when you hit a, hit a landing page of a certain company online. And it's all about the business. And it might start something like, you know, we've been in business for 20 years. We've done this and we've done that and we've done the other. Here's why we're the best around. Remember this and this is a big one. Your customers don't care. They don't care about you they don't care about your business, and they don't care about the accomplishments that you've had in the past. What do your customers care about? They care about themselves, that's human nature. So, the moment you start to realize that if you start to talk about what your customer wants, what your customer wants, they'll be exponentially more receptive to what you have to say. It's a complete game changer. So use your copy to entice the customer and speak to their emotions. What does your target customer want? Who are they? You know, what would prompt them to keep reading through your email or your sales copy or your, your landing page or your ad copy? What would prompt them to click? You know, what would prompt them to purchase? Put yourself in your customer's shoes and then use your copywriting to speak to who that person is. Remember, put yourself in your customer's shoes and then use that copy to speak to who that person is. So, focus on your customer's problems. You know, what are they looking for? All right, so moving on. Tip number three now is going to deal with your mindset, actually. It has nothing to do with the copy as a whole. It just has to deal with your mindset. Now, this is a, a really important one, in my opinion, and one that's a complete game changer if you start to understand why. So. Start approaching your copy as if your as, as if selling is not a bad thing, or you know, even if you're selling not selling in that particular piece of writing or content. Stop approaching it like you're disturbing the reader or the audience. We learn, you know, we grow up and we learn that salesmen are bad; they get a bad rep. You know, we learn that they just want our money; that they do anything, they'd say anything to get us to buy. 
But if you have a great product or a helpful piece of content and you believe that that product or content, you know, you believe in that wholeheartedly and you know that it can help people with whatever your product, service, or piece of content is, then it is your duty. I repeat, it is your duty to get that person to buy. You are doing your customer a disservice if you're not selling them with your copy. You are doing your audience a favor by giving them valuable advice. You are doing your audience a favor. I repeat, you are doing your audience a favor by sending them free helpful information. So the moment you start to think that way, I promise you it'll co- it'll come across in your writing. You'll stop coming from the angle of, you know, oh, sorry to disturb you, but you know, I'd, I'd really be grateful if you read this. You know, I don't want to step on your toes and, and, and you know, kind of throw you off on your day. And you'll start coming more from the angle of, you know, here's a great freaking tip that's gonna help you make more money. And I highly suggest that you take advantage of it. But you know, if you don't, that's cool too. Small mindset shift huge change in the copywriting that comes across. I promise you that. So believe in your product, believe in your content, then do your customers and audience a favor and put it in front of them. So tip number four, and we'll jump back into this uh, email right here as an example, is to uh, build on your copy. So what do I mean by that exactly? Well, let's go back to this example, like I said, of the copy from before. Let me read it to you, actually. Let me just read it to you. So this, obviously, like I touched on before, is for people that sign up for my free dropshipping course. So this is triggered a couple days afterwards, and it says, are you making this crucial dropshipping mistake? The first line, obviously, entices the reader, uh, you know, who's interested in dropshipping, obviously, and, you know, they, they think to themselves, oh my god, am I making this mistake? So let me just read it to you. Are you making this crucial dropshipping mistake? What's the best way to grow your dropshipping business? Most people's answer, get more customers. Are they wrong? In theory, no. In reality, yes. Most people focus on how to increase their sales or how to run more profitable ads. And of course that helps. But the best way to grow your dropshipping business isn't to focus on those one-off customers. It's actually to focus on building your backend, improve customer service, grow your store social media, forge relationships with your customers, build your brand. If you want to look, if you sorry, if you want to learn more about how to improve your store's backend, increase repeat customers, and build your brand, click the link below. And the link, obviously, Grow My Brand takes you to a YouTube video that demonstrates all those things in a video form because it's hard to put all that into, you know, you don't want to overextend in your copy. It's easier for me to say all that in a video than in a long piece of copy. So what's the whole point of reading this to you? Well, notice how every sentence and every line is building on one another toward the end goal. So what's the end goal? The end goal is to click the link to get them to the YouTube video so I can sell them and, and you know, basically, I don't believe I'm actually selling that video, but to give them more pieces of content, give them more value so it builds that relationship, okay? Notice how every sentence, like I said, is building on one another toward the end goal. The writing in this email is calculated for a single purpose. Think of every line and every sentence as a dot that connects to the next one. Each line increase, you know, entices the reader to connect the next dot and the next dot until they're finally prompted to click on the button to the video at the bottom. This is a simple tip. It's all leading to the, to the, to the video at the bottom. That's the whole angle here. This is a simple tip, like I said, but it works wander. <laughs> it works wonders. So remember, use this connecting the dot strategy to lead your reader to the end goal. All right, now number five should be a no-brainer, and I'm gonna stay here for a second because it's it, I can demonstrate it really fast here. Should be a no-brainer, but I see I constantly see people doing this. Make sure that your call to actions are at the very end of your copy, and make sure that you have a call to act to action at all. You know, a lot of people don't, and that's surprising to me. So, if your goal, for example, is you know to you know in a write in an email like this in your writing is to get a click well then you need to add a cta at the end that literally says click the link below okay a cta at the end that tells them what you know what what you want them to do so click the link below blah 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 and then tell them exactly what they're going to get by clicking so if you want to learn more everything here is to connect the dots telling them uh, you know about a potential dropshipping mistake that they could be making and then i say you know if you want to learn more about how to actually fix this this is the, the solution to the problem that i've just you know proposed right here if you want to learn the solution a little bit more in depth click the link below boom okay so it's pretty simple all right so if you have you know copywriting for a sales page for an example to go in a different tangent maybe for an online course that you're selling at the very end guess what 
You need to tell them to enroll in the course. You need a CTA. You need a call to action. So make sure that your copywriting has a call to, a to action at the end. Your customers are smart. It's true. But don't assume that they'll know where to go or that they'll know automatically that the action that you want them to take is to click the link or to enroll in the course. You need to tell them.